Today I thought we'd take a look at analog in Ableton Live and how we can set it up to make some of those big lush pads. If you're not familiar with analog, you're able to use dual filters, split the filters, modulate the stereo field. It's uh, easy to set up and you can get some very nice sort of classical thick creamy pad from that. Other sounds as well of course, but um, in this video I just want to concentrate on the generation of pads. Let's have a quick listen then, and then I'll show you how to, to set up analog to produce these kind of tones. So here we have analog, and I've integrated it into an instrument rack here with the purpose of, um, and we'll come to this in the build, but the purpose of setting up a lot of the restrictions on how the instrument can sound, setting various constraints here. I'll come to these and I'll also do some screenshots for these later in the video if you want to set this up yourself. But basically we have analog here in an instrument rack. We, if we just take a quick look, we can see that we've got both oscillators operating. We're running the filters here in parallel. That means that we can pan them. We go to the amp, we have two amps operating. So two, two, two filters, two amps, and allows us to then pan our, um, our oscillators and our filters here, which we can control from the rack here. So if we open up the, the spread, we immediately start getting a much bigger stereo field. That's one of the purposes of using the two filters so we can create this effect. We also have here control over the modulation within the stereo field. If we um, look here, we have an LFO and this activates this off here until we get to about 64 or exactly 64. Then the LFO will switch on, here we see that. And then we have a very slow rate here, 0.1, which you can control the LFO with. And if we increase very slowly, we can get some different combinations, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. I've kind of offset them a bit, two to two, two to 0 0.3, etc. So you have some combinations of LFO speed here and then with this we can introduce some modulation to the sound and start moving filters around within the stereo fill. Let's just um, get some resonance on here. And you'll start to hear them moving around. So we have this possibility to move things around. We don't have to have it so fast. We can drop it down if we want. So this is a very simple rack. It just gives us some basic controls. As I say, we have control over pan spread. We have control over the filter here. And um, I've made some specific settings to the filter to make it a little bit, to, to kind of optimize the frequency range and the resonance to get those sort of creamy tones. We also have the ability here um, to modulate the filter as well. This is connected to this LFO, so when the LFO is on, we can introduce some filter modulation. We'll get a little bit more movement, and we will speed that up a bit. So we can introduce movement there. And finally we have here 
uh, filter envelope another possibility for movement. So these all combine here to allow us to manipulate effectively the sound in the stereo field. The rest is all basic stuff. We can have control over the, the shape here. We have a sign. We have that for both oscillators. We can adjust semitone for oscillator one. We can detune off the oscillator one. Maybe if we go here to put this back on a saw wave, then we can detune. And then finally, we have control over our ADSR. Long sweeping pads if we want. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. Okay, let's have a look how it's put together then. So to begin with, we'll need uh, an instrument rack. We can just drop one in here, drag it onto a, a MIDI channel. You can open up here the macros. It'll say macro one, macro two, macro three. I've just kept the original names. You can rename them here if you want, or just carry them over from analog when you do the mapping. We'll be needing all 16. And then we will need to drop um, analog in here. And then there's a, a few settings we need to do, specifically around the amps and filter here. So we'll activate the filter two, the amp 2, LFO and LFO 1. While we're at the LFO, I change this to a triangle, the shape. It's just my preference. You can set it as a, a sign if you want. Then we'll go back to the filter here. And this we need to drag down to 0% to filter 2. We don't want to send anything to filter 2. We just want this to go through this amp channel here. Filter 2 we need to set to match one, which is a 24 dB filter. And then over here, we need to stop oscillator one going to one, to F1, we need it to go to F2. So that means this oscillator comes through here, through the filter and through the amp. This one comes through here, through this filter, through this amp and out, allowing us to pan and do the various different settings. Okay, so that's all set up. The volume level we need to drop down a little bit to about minus six, I found worked. You can tweak this if you like. Let's just have a look, make sure we have everything. That seems okay. Now we can go and do the mapping. And um, if you want to increase your voices here, you can increase this here in the, in the volume section. You could have more voices if you want. I'll, I'll leave it at eight. Um, okay, so. Let's go then and do the mapping here. We'll start with the envelopes. There are four envelopes here, ADSR, uh, AMP1, AMP2, Filter1, and Filter2, these four envelopes we need to map. So we'll just map them all to this ADSR. A for attack, D for decay, S sustain, our release. So that's the first one mapped. Then we'll go to AMP2, repeat that. Then we can go to filter one and map those envelopes very quickly. And finally, filter two. Right, so those are the four envelopes mapped. While we're here, we will map also this filter envelope here, which is this value, the four. We'll map that to filter envelope. And the same for filter one. We'll take this and map that here. Then we can deal with the pan spread. We'll take amp one, the pan, map it here. And also the pan modulation, which is this LFO one value here, pan mod LFO one. We'll map that to pan mod. We'll repeat that for amp two. 
Let's hit the pan. And this LFO2 now pan mod will map that here's a pan mod. Then we might as well set up the LFO while we're here, which is the LFO1 icon. We'll map that. And also LFO2, that's effectively the on off switch for the LFO. Then we'll need to take the rate and the rate of this one here. So those are mapped. What do we have? We have the filter and the rest here. Let's go back to filter one then. We'll take the frequency, the resonance, and the filter mod amount, which is frequency mod LFO1 here. We'll map that. Let's repeat that for filter two. So we'll take the frequency, the resonance, and LFO2 frequency mod amount, map that here to frequency mod, the LFO1 resonance. So we will take this and map it here to the filter mod. And we will do that for filter two as well, which is this resonance mod LFO2, we map that to the filter mod. And finally, we're gonna attach here, we go to oscillator one, we're going to map here the sub level for the sub oscillator to the resonance. And the reason for that, we'll do this for oscillator two as well. We'll map that one here also to the resonance. The reason is that when we increase the resonance, we'll kind of drop off the bass a little bit so it doesn't get too bass heavy. We'll, we'll see that once we set up the constraints here. Okay, so I think all we have now is uh, the shape of oscillator one semitone oscillator one and the detune then we have shape oscillator two and the level of oscillator two which is this bar here okay so now i'll punch in the constraints but uh i won't put you through that i'll just put a screenshot up of this page and this one here so there'll be two screenshots you can pause the video take your time punch in these values as you see them in the screenshots and that should set up the instrument hopefully correctly. Okay, so that's everything punched in. Let's um, we can close the mapping now. Let's put uh, one of the um, snapshots on. You don't have to use snapshots, of course. You can. Just once you've created a patch you like, just save it here as a normal analog preset. You can then use it wherever you like. Or if you want to keep this rack, of course, you just click here on this icon, this disk icon. That'll save it into your user library, uh, presets, instruments, instrument rack. You'll find it in there. You can just drop it into any project you want to use it with then. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. There we go. Seems to sound okay. There we go, we have the pan spread. That seems to be working. LFO, we can switch on and off. Everything's okay there. Modulation. As always, I hope this has been useful to somebody that can make use of it. It's a uh, it's a simple rack, a little bit tricky to set up, but um, the results are good, I think. Gives you that nice crunchy, crunchy sort of pad sound, old school. Okay, thanks for watching. As I say, take care, and I'll see you in the next one then, hopefully. Bye-bye.